Hello everyone. Welcome to your English class. I'm Sharin K. Rahman from the Department of English. This video is based on the book Ways with Words, Literatures in English, which is the prescribed textbook for your common course A02. This book has four sections. Section 1 is poetry, which includes seven poems. Section 2 is short stories with four short stories. Section 3 is prose and there are two prose pieces for you to study. And section 4 is a one act play. This video is an introduction to the first poem in the poetry section. The poem is Sonnet 29 written by William Shakespeare. You may have learned about Shakespeare in your school. He lived between 1564 and 1616. William Shakespeare is also known as Bard or Poet of Avon or Swan of Avon because he was born in a place called Stratford-upon-Avon in England. Shakespeare was baptized on 26th April 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon, Warwickshire, England and he died on 23rd April 1616 in Stratford-upon-Avon. He was a poet, dramatist and actor. He is often called the English national poet and many consider him to be the greatest dramatist of all time. Let's see why Shakespeare is considered to be the greatest dramatist of all time. Shakespeare occupies a unique position in world literature because his plays written in the late 16th and early 17th centuries for a small theatre are now performed and read more often and in more countries than ever before. That's why the poet and dramatist Ben Jonson, who was his great contemporary or someone who lived during his period, said about Shakespeare, he was not of an age, but for all time. Now, let's see some details about his personal life. William Shakespeare was born as the third child of John Shakespeare and Mary Arden. He was educated at King Edward VI Grammar School, Stratford. At 18, he married Anne Hathaway. After marriage and having children, he shifted to London. There, he became an apprentice in a theatre and started his acting career. Later, he became a playwright and a producer. Now, let's learn about Shakespeare's works. Shakespeare has written more than 30 plays. His plays are divided into the genres tragedy, history and comedy. His great tragedies include Hamlet, written in 1603, Othello, written in 1623, King Lear, written in 1608, and Macbeth, written in 1623. Any tragedy is concerned primarily with a tragic hero and his tragic flaw. Now, what do we mean by a tragic flaw? A tragic flaw is the fundamental tragic trait of the hero or protagonist. His interest, passion or particular habit leading to the downfall. For example, vaulting ambition is considered to be the tragic flaw of Macbeth. Coming to Shakespeare's sonnets. Shakespeare has written 
154 sonnets. They are his most popular works. Most of them are addressed to either a young man or a dark lady. Much is not known about the identity of these people. Now let's see what a sonnet is. A sonnet is a lyric poem of 14 lines written in a single stanza. Now what is a lyric? It is a short poem that expresses the personal thoughts and feelings of the person who wrote it. The term is derived from a form of ancient Greek literature, which is also called the lyric, which was defined by its musical accompaniment, usually on a stringed instrument known as the lyre. You can see the picture of a woman playing a lyre here. So when we say a sonnet is a lyric poem, we mean that it expresses the personal thoughts and feelings of the writer. In a sonnet, the lines are linked by an intricate rhyming scheme. Based on the stanza quiet term and rhyme scheme, the sonnets written in English language are divided into two. One is Petrarchan sonnet and the other is Shakespearean or English sonnet. Now, what do we mean by rhyme scheme? A rhyme scheme is a pattern of rhymes at the end of each line of a poem or a song. And what do we mean by rhyme? Words that rhyme have the same last sound. For example, Blue and flu rhyme. Now let's learn in detail about the two types of sonnets. First one is Petrarchan sonnet. It is named after the 14th century Italian poet Petrarch. Now let's see what is the rhyme scheme of a Petrarchan sonnet. It is a, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, C, D, E, C, D, E. The 14 lines of the sonnet are divided into two sets. One is called the octave with 8 lines. The second is called sestet with 6 lines. As you see the color coded letters, on the screen, the first line rhymes with the 4th, 5th and 8th line in the octave. The 2nd, 3rd, 6th and 7th lines rhyme together. Now in the sestet, the ninth line rhymes with the 12th line, the 10th line rhymes with the 13th line, the 11th line rhymes with the 14th line. Now moving on to the Shakespearean sonnet or English sonnet. As we all know, it was practiced by Shakespeare. In a Shakespearean sonnet, the lines are divided into four, four lines. A set of four lines which is called quatrains. There are three quatrains and a couplet in a Shakespearean sonnet. A couplet is a set of two lines. The rhyme scheme of a Shakespearean sonnet could be understood from the color coded letters on the screen. The first line rhymes with the third line. Second line rhymes with the fourth line. Fifth line rhymes with the seventh line and sixth line rhymes with the eighth line. The ninth line rhymes with the eleventh line and the tenth line rhymes with the twelfth line. 
the couplet or the last two lines rhyme with each other the rhyming pattern will be more clear to you once you learn the poem some of shakespeare's sonnets are more popular than others here are a few of them sonnet 18 shall i compare thee to the summer's day sonnet 116 Let me not to the marriage of true minds and sonnet 73 that time of the year thou mayest in me behold though shakespearean sonnets are wide ranging in themes they focus predominantly on love transience of life or impermanence of life beauty and workings of desire we learn more about the structure and themes in sonnet 29 in the next video thank you for watching and happy learning